everyone. Uh, my name is Erica Nelson. My pronouns are she and her. Um, my, I have a podcast called the Awkward Angler Podcast. And I'm also a Brown Folks Fishing Ambassador. Um, and I'm also the co-founder of Real Consulting, which stands for Reconcile, Evolve, Advance, and Lead. Um, and we co-created the Angling for All Pledge. So um, my job, I'm a consultant, so I travel around just to meet clients face to face. I know, right? We get to start meeting face to face more and more, which is nice. Um, and I just like to travel in general. I'm a fan of road trips. So if I can drive there, I'll definitely choose that option. So I'm in the car a lot. <laughs> and um, my last two jobs also were 60% travel, but I had to drive. So I've gotten used to um, you know, kind of, or I've been working on systems over and over of trying to figure out how am I going to stay organized and how, how can I fish along the way? So I typically, when I have a trip that I'm going to go on, I will map out and actually plan to stop along the way to fish wherever I'm going, even if it's a fishing trip. So I always kind of like to look for different opportunities and, and whatnot to, to, um, to stop and fish. So um, just kind of one thing to consider if that's something that you want to try is maybe, you know, um, road tripping, but also fishing along the way is just kind of a mindset. Um, I've noticed that today, I actually just got back from um, Boulder, which is a three hour drive. So I typically make about three hour drives into nine hour days. <laughs> and so um, just kind of that mi mindset of, am I gonna plan to stop and enjoy? Or are you one of those people that just wants to get there? <laughs> and so really just kind of, it's okay if you change your mind, but that's just one thing that I've noticed about myself is I'm, you know, I'm kind of hard on myself of, oh, I was planning to fish, but you know, I just wanted to get there. I just wanted to get there. So, um, and then also if you're traveling with anybody, um, checking in to see if that's what they want to do, or if they're also the type that just kind of wants to, you know, no stops. <laughs> so that's just kind of something to consider before you, before you get on the road. Um, so I kind of like to uh, uh, chunk this out into three different parts. So pre-trip, you know, on your trip and then post-trip. And so pre-trip is um, just kind of making sure that you're adding in that fishing time. Um, you know, if you're Googling out, you know, what's the time drive time that I'm going to have, but adding a couple hours um, per stop. So if I'm going to stop at a couple places, you know, do I need to wait her up when I get there? Do I need to set up my rig? Is there hiking time perhaps, um, you know, and then you're on the river time and then also the de-rigging and unwaitering and whatnot. So just kind of some little details to kind of consider and to think about um, and adding into your trip, especially if you're meeting somebody um, at the end of your destination. So, um, and then I also like, I'm a big fan of lists as well. So <laughs> definitely, I'm a, I, I, you know, I have my packing list, I have my on the road list, you know, and everything else that I need. So just making a list for everything and what to do as well. Um, I also advise checking the weather. <laughs> I've been in some interesting situations, particularly today from, um, I drove from Denver to Carbondale today in Colorado and um, it snowed. Um, and then once I got over a certain mountain pass, it was nice and sunny. And um, then when I got home, it was raining and hailing. So just kind of making sure that if you're gonna stop in those places. So I had kind of had to pack for pretty much all seasons today. <laughs> um, and then I also, brought some things like emergency equipments, like, um, you know, the non-perishable foods and making sure that I have um, a water bottle and also extra water on hand, just in case something happens. Um, and then I also, um, uh, if I'm going to take an extended trip and I'm camping, or if I just want to like bring some things to make or make food on the road, I will actually put those in the freezer. Um, so what can I freeze ahead of time? So water bottles, any lunch meat, um, any dinners that I'm trying to cook or whatnot. Um, and that just kind of goes right in my cooler um, when I'm packing. And then also making sure that, you know, this is kind of an easy one, but charging your batteries, <laughs> your phones and all the things, especially if you're camping, making sure that you get ahead of that. Um, and then also make sure that you check for fishing licenses, especially if you're traveling out of state. So where am I gonna go? And we'll get to, I'll get to more of that um, in a little bit. Um, and then also just kind of going off of, um, this is already mentioned and I'm sure it'll be mentioned again, but the uh, this is one thing that I like to kind of bring up. This is, one, knowing your route and acknowledging the land. Um, I identify as an indigenous woman. My tribe is Navajo. Um, and one of the things that I like to know is, you know, whose water am I fishing on? Whose water am I traveling on? Who are the ancestral, uh, you know, caretakers of this land? So that's one um, app um, I just kind of put in the link in the chat there that I like to use just to kind of have that, that reverence and kind of that mindset of, you know, I'm, I'm traveling on indigenous lands. 
And then I kind of want to look at um, how do I know what lands can and waters can I actually fish? So, you know, if you're so used to just staying in your area, but now you're going to travel to a new area, how do you know what's kind of what's legal, what's not legal? So I'm just going to go over really briefly, but I'm also going to put this really awesome resource um, into the chat as well. And this is just kind of going over four different land management management types. Um, so there's the National Park Service, also known as NPS. So that's pretty much all of our national parks. An example of that would be Yellowstone, you know. Um, and also going back to the licensing, if you're traveling in national park lands and you want to fish there, um, typically there's, uh, you know, definitely check in with the park office because you might need a park license in addition to a state license. So there you might need two different licenses. <laughs> and so uh, just making sure that you're getting ahead of that um, is, is really helpful. The other land management is the BLM, also known as the Bureau of Land Management, also known as Public Lands. And that's pretty much considered desert lowlands, like um, lowlands um, type of sagebrush, foothill area type stuff. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of, you know, public lands or our lands. So we can basically, those are definitely our lands. <laughs> and so you can camp anywhere, um, typically up to 14 days um, for free. So there's a lot of dispersed camping and stuff um, and sites and things that you can fish on as well um, in the BLM. There's also the Fish and Wildlife Service um, that is more or less um, national hatcheries, fisheries. So that's also a resource that you can look at to look at different fisheries if you're looking to kind of hit up those spots. Um, and they also have really great information if you find an office as well um, on getting maps and whatnot um, in the local area that you're traveling to. The fourth, or the, excuse me, the third, um, or excuse me, the fourth land management is the U.S. Forest Service, um, and that's typically um, public lands in national forests and um, uh, and grasslands. So um, this is the resource that I'm putting in the chat. It's a great article um, on a Knowles blog, kind of going over all those different land managements. Um, there's also um, tribal lands as well. So tribal lands definitely um, are, are have sovereign lands that they manage themselves. So checking in to see if you're going to travel into any of those areas is really helpful um, that I found. And if you don't know, um, I'm just throwing in all these links here in the chat. <laughs> here is a map of the BIA, which stands for Bureau uh, uh, Bureau. Well, Bureau of Indian Affairs. Wow, my mind went blank there. And so that is tribal land management um, if you happen to be going through different lands. Um, Wyoming kind of sticks out in particular, especially if you're going from Jackson um, and heading, heading east, you'll hit um, the Wind River Reservation and different um, tribes along the way. So, and really great waters to fish as well and definitely worth the, the extra fishing license as well if you're traveling in that area. Um, if you're kind of not looking to be old school and looking at maps, um, there is a, an app called OnX, and I use the hunting app. It's about $100 a year, um, so I just kind of bit the bullet and, and bought it, which has been really helpful um, to kind of understand whose land am I on, not like, like today. <laughs> so um, it actually has landowners um, landowners' uh, names on the map as well. So you're able to see, is this BLM? Is this uh, Forest Service? Is this managed by the Wild Fish um, and Services land? So that's just kind of another resource um, that I like to use as well. So that's kind of the planning part of your road trip. Um, and then I'll kind of talk about packing as well. So Angelica had, you know, um, make sure you have all your chargers. So I always kind of like to keep mine handy as well. I like to have a car charging station just to make sure that I'm staying charged. So there's converter boxes and stuff that you can have. Um, and they're pretty cheap. You can get them at Walmart as well. Um, also, I pack for the road hazards. Uh, my example today, you know, going through all four seasons. So making sure I have an ice scraper, <laughs> I have water, uh, non-perishable foods and, and whatnot, just in case um, I happen to get stuck. And then I also kind of plan uh, making sure that I'm packing um, and prepared for a day on the water. So sometimes um, you just want to pack, get in the car, then you get to your destination, that's it. And then, or if you want to stop, you're kind of digging through your luggage. So I kind of like to make sure that I'm setting my fishing stuff aside, um, like a sun shirt, um, et cetera, of a day on the water. I liked Angelica's slide and her tip of wear a light outfit in the car, because you can always adjust. So I always typically change into my fishing clothes and then back into my road trip clothes. <laughs> and so that's just kind of what I've 
have learned to do along the way to stay comfortable. Um, and then also just kind of making sure that your um, fishing gear is accessible um, uh, so that way you're not packing your luggage on top of it and then you're kind of digging all over for it. So <laughs> making sure that um, it's on top, you're able to get it. Um, I also like to keep mine hidden. So if we look at the photo, I have um, been playing around with different boxes and there is that plastic box, which is um, hosting and hiding my um, my new bag. Um, I'm really excited about a new pack that I got um, to take on the water by Orvis. And so I don't feel comfortable um, sometimes just laying all this expensive gear out. <laughs> and so especially if I'm traveling to places I just don't know. So um, this one has a lid and I can also access it in the front as well. And it's just stacked on top of another one identical to that. And that was about $6 from Walmart. Um, and I was really stoked about that because <laughs> um, if I get Dirt and stuff in it. I can also just um, hose it out and let it dry um, after my trip as well. And then there's the box in the front and that is hosting my waders and my boots. And that's actually a wooden box that I found at Target and that was about $25. And um, I have lined it with an Ikea bag. I am a big fan of Ikea bags. Anybody else? <laughs> So it's kind of like type tarp material. It's really heavy duty. Um, so um, that's really great to just kind of store it in there. Um, and then I also um, put my wet things in there. And then when I get home or to my destination, I'm able just to kind of um, take the bag um, and take it to the hotel room or wherever I'm staying and let it dry, dry out for the night. Um, so that's just kind of some um, storage areas that I kind of like to use. Um, there's my green water bottle um, that I like to keep filled. It's about five gallons. Um, really great um, for hand washing, for washing dishes, for, um, you know, extra water if you don't want to stop at a gas station. Um, so just really nice to kind of have um, in handy. Um, I also just keep a bag, um, which is behind the water bottle with just extra clothes. So like a puffy, a rain jacket, um, extra socks, you know, just kind of basic river stuff in case. Um, and, and I always kind of prepare if I fall into the water, <laughs> I'm able to kind of just have that extra layer on handy. That other little bag that's red and white in the front, um, that's actually a upcycled bag made out of um, a sailing material, so an old sail. And so it's kind of material, it's a little bit stronger than the Ikea bag. Um, I happen to just find that in a free pile. I'm, I'm also super cheap, by the way, so <laughs> I'm all for free piles that are on the side of the road. Um, but I actually have wet wading shoes um, and neoprene socks. So um, I don't like to stuff my wet stuff, um, you know, in the car when I'm done. So I just kind of like to keep those isolated and separate um, as well. So that's just kind of another idea. Um, I also bring my rod tube as well. Um, and I typically have a camp chair just for, um, you never know when you just want to chill on the side of the river <laughs> and watch hatches. So, um, and then my net as well. And then you'll see the bungee cord there. Um, somebody on Instagram asked, why do people have the X, like the two connected? Um, and honestly, the answer to that is um, it was the cheapest assorted packet because I didn't know if this was going to work or not. And so I just bought an assorted package of, of bungee cords. And I have a little um, holders on the side. Um, I've seen folks kind of also use the top if you have like the handlebar on the top of your car that will also attach it there. Um, and that's just for my rod reel to sit in and then I um, guide my my rod into the seat up front just for more stability um, and that's been kind of that's been working really well for me lately um, is something that I've I've come to find I'm open to other tips and advice and stuff so I'm not um, ready to bite the bullet on a rod vault those are pretty pricey and I don't know if I how to mount it so um, this is just kind of my quick fix um, for for um, for holding my rod and the paint roller yes so <laughs> I've had a lot of fun. So whenever I, you know, typically when I'm done fishing, I am in a wad. I'm, you know, my flies are just not working out for me um, and they're just a mess. Or if I just want to rig in my car, but I don't feel like digging anything out. Um, though I actually put my flies on that. Um, so I'll clip them and, and host my flies there. Or if I have a really great nymph setup, say I have a fly here and another, you know, um, couple um, feet of tippet, I'll hook it on there and then I'll roll it and then I'll hook the other one so that way I can reuse it um, in my next stop as well. Um, I've been playing around with that. I've also used um, a metal dish. I found like a metal dish in the automotive section at Walmart. And so I kind of played with that um, because it was um, 
magnetic. Um, so that kind of hosted my flies um, as well. I also kind of played with going into the craft section and getting a magnet, like a magnet strip, foam squares, um, or a Velcro strip as well. So definitely MacGyver trick. <laughs> I'm really proud of that. <laughs> it's been, um, been working out for me as well. So um, any questions so far? Um, yes, when you were talking about the uh, four different Slices for information. I missed number three. Oh, yes. I'm sorry about that. Yes. So we That's have okay. um, National Park Service, the Bureau of Land Management, mm -hmm. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the U.S. Forest Service. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So um, I also kind of keep a snack bag um, and a cooler. So I'm still working on what that looks like for me, um, especially if I'm camping, that can be a little bit different. Um, so I'm also not attached to a certain cooler. So if you have recommendations and you're like, this cooler is great for road trips, I am all ears for that <laughs> as well. So keeping snacks on hand as well and making sure that I'm not packing those. Um, I usually keep those in the front seat if I'm not traveling with anybody. And then also just making sure to have your maps on hand or download before you lose service. I've traveled along the West where, you know, the state, pretty much Wyoming is pretty much no self-service, especially, you know, until you get to the towns. So, you know, if you uh, want to stop and um, you don't know if they're self-service or not, I always just kind of err on the side of downloading um, everything beforehand just to make sure you, you don't get lost and you know where you're going. Um, and then if you're camping or glamping, I'm definitely a glamper these days. <laughs> so um, I like to uh, keep all of my camping gear in a big tote. So maybe I'll take one of those plastic totes out and replace it with a bigger one um, for all my camping stuff. Um, and I typically separate my sleeping stuff and my kitchen stuff. So good camping practice, you want to space those out um, a little bit. So I just kind of keep those separate um, um, or, or I just put it in one big tote if, if it's just myself. Um, I also keep a poop kit as well. So that's just kind of like a little shovel, and a toilet paper, and then a bag for the uh, disposal of your toilet paper. Definitely do not burn it, don't bury it, um, pack it out, you know, throw it out at the next gas station. I know that's a little weird, but you know, definitely that happens um, while we're out there. So, um, and then also hand sanitizer and small soap as well is kind of part of that poop kit. And then I use the um, jug of water to wash my hands as well. Um, so yeah, um, one thing to consider as well is smoky clothes. If you're having a campfire, I once did a business trip and I accidentally mixed my smoky clothes with my business clothes. So I smelled like campfire the whole time. Um, so that's just something that I've learned uh, to consider is maybe having an extra, you know, maybe bringing an extra cube bag or whatnot and keeping that away from the rest of your clothes if you're going to go out after, after camping or fishing and whatnot. So um, just kind of some learnings there. And then your post trip, um, I always, I know once we get to our destination, it's really hard to unpack. I don't know if you're one of those folks that like lets your luggage sit there for days, maybe weeks <laughs> until you really want that shirt, then you got to unpack. So I recommend um, at least prioritizing your wet clothes and your wet shoes. So making sure that you take those out and let those air dry um, is really important. Um, and then also cleaning your cooler. <laughs> I've had some really horrible, uh, interesting experiments growing in my coolers before so it's not fun to clean out when you gotta um, get it back out um, and then again I always just take care of the smoky clothes as well immediately right when I get home because then I, I've noticed that the whole house starts to smell um, if I'm too lazy to unpack those things <laughs> so um, that's kind of my my spiel there so any questions or any other additions oh wag bags yes I definitely keep that I, I forgot that yes that's also my poop kit as well just in case a wag bag is really great um, you can it's a it's pretty small um, and then once you open it um, it's kind of like a bigger plastic bag that you poop in <laughs> and uh, there's kind of some materials in there that'll help um, one with odor and then also just kind of com composing composting and it usually comes with like a little bit of toilet paper and a hand wipe um, and then once you're done you'll put it back into the little bag and then it seals so then you can toss it whenever you're done so definitely good on Harriet for the wag bags, yes. <laughs>
Any other, oh, collapsible cooler. Yes, I once saw those. Um, so if you have any brands or whatnot, I would love to get that information. Um, wag bags, I found them at um, um, land management offices. Um, so if you go to like the US forest uh, or um, if you, an area that you need to get a permit, um, that's where I found them. You can also buy them at Bass Pro or um, Cabela's um, in, in your camping places as well. So, oh, nice, bought a giant box online. That's probably a good idea too. So any other questions or any other additions? Well, thanks for your time. Awesome, Erica. 